the three fighting game archetypes as Zonus, Rushdown and Grappless. They form a triangle of full possibilities within the fighting game genre, and every other archetype just builds upon those, or is like an add-on type unrelated to the basic character design. Like a charged character could easily be a Zona, a Rushdown or a Grappler, it just talks about how their motion inputs are. Or puppet characters, they can be whatever, it just says what their main gimmick is. So, Zona archetype just describes a character that really does not want the opponent to go in. They want the opponent to stay at full screen for as long as they need to. They have tools like Fireball, so the opponent has to first deal with it before approaching. Their tools very often result in huge pushback. They have strong anti-airs and reversals, everything to accentuate the get-off-me aspect. They win by getting a lead and just keeping it. They struggle when the opponent has stronger approaching tools, or they find a hole in Zona's defense from being predictable. Rushdowns are the characters that really want to get in and swarm the opponent in an endless rain of moves and mix-ups. They often have moves that straight up bypass opponent's defenses. They are often small and fast. They have some of the fastest moves in the game. Their mix-ups are plentiful, but small. Their health is often limited in return, so whenever the opponent does guess very right, the rushdown character feels it. The grapplers are the characters that really want to get in and swarm the opponent in an endless rain of mix-ups and vortexes. They often have moves that straight up bypass the opponent's defenses. They're big, bulky and slow and they use throws as the main means of dealing damage or threatening damage. Once they're in, their command throws are some of the fastest in the game. Every time they're in, they force at least a 50-50. But when the opponent guesses right, they lose a lot of health. That's why they often have a lot of that. And if you have any experience with actually playing fighting games, you might have noticed that it's kind of bullshit. Rushdown characters are often small and fast, but that doesn't mean those qualities make a character feel rushdowny. There are lots of characters that have big grappling mix-ups and stuff, but they don't really feel like grapplers. Or they do feel kinda like grapplers, but they really only fit into they use throws part of the definition. But also, aren't the definitions for grapplers and rushdowns the exact freaking same? How can it be a triangle if two versuses are in the same position? I mean, grapplers are slow and rushdown characters are fast. Okay, but can there be a rushdown character that is big and slow? Why not? Onimaru only has a basic throw that barely reaches, he doesn't have a proper mix-up, and he's not exactly Zona, he very often wants to go in, so if the triangle is real, that makes him a rushdown character? And honestly, he does kinda feel like that. By the way, if you don't understand what the hell Onimaru is, that, that's what I feel! Uh, like uh, Guilty Gear and Fight at Z players, you you constantly using like words that don't make sense. Um, and being quick doesn't mean you aren't a grappler either. Taking Fantasy Strike as an example again, Setsuki, the Euro Rushdown character, has a full throw game and it's very risky indeed, so she is often classified as a dual type character. Like, throws isn't even a consistent mechanic across games. There are even games without throws. Like, 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 like Taken. The regular grappler characters are the kings, but honestly they rarely use the throws, because those don't exist, and even then, their moveset outside of throws is just way too solid on its own. In a game like Fantasy Strike, attempting to throw is a huge risk on its own. Yes, this combo does 6 out of 7 damage into a very strong mix-up. And compare that to throwing in, for example, Killer Instinct. Like, what you gonna do? Break it? Aha, lol! Throws aren't a fundamental fighting game mechanic. There are games that could functionally easily exist without throws, and there are games without throws to begin with. What is a throw then, if it's not an essential mechanic? Well, one could describe it as any unblockable attack, like, like really, there is not much difference between a throw and an unblockable. The Hero Academia Arena Fighter straight up doesn't differentiate, those are both the red move every character has. Some do have a special animation on a successful hit, and some don't, there is no functional distinction. So then, is the grappler character the one that heavily relies on unblockables in their game plan? Is Brian a grappler by that definition? Is Yoshimitsu? And even then, the unblockable attacks vary so much between games. In my and most other fighting game players I talk to opinion, the only rushdown grappler distinction just straight up isn't very useful. For game developers and limit their viewing to making Street Fighter clone characters with adjustments. 2D characters are often categorized by stereotypes instead of what is actually happening. 
and they are often uncategorizable with the triangle characters. 3D games kinda do their own thing, because the fireballs don't exist. Well, that, that much. But former fighters do their own thing, because Nintendo and the arena fighters don't do a thing, because there are like 200 people playing arena fighters competitively. But I really wish there was a huge competitive arena fighter, it's just the render is saturated with not... So yeah. I propose another triangle that does actually make sense, and it seems to be applicable to every fighter, because the way I'm going to define it, we as a community already use those to describe the three archetypes. The new triangle is Keep Out, Prussia, I Mix Up. We often say that Zonus are the characters that focus on the Keep Out game, and we describe moves, oh, this is clearly a Keep Out move. You can adopt a Keep Out strategy in the middle of your gameplay, by which you focus on attacks that are just long and tall, you focus on footies instead of rushing in and guns blading. Pressure is when you force someone to behave a certain way, keep them blocking until they get frustrated and try to do something, and at that moment the pressure character gets a counter hit. You are top the pressure strategy when you go, mm, so I'm just gonna go in and do stuff until they make a mistake. Pressure does include going for mix-ups sometimes, but it really isn't necessary. You might be able to just win on cheap damage, or even time them out because there's really nothing for the opponent to guess. Good pressure tools are the ones that are fast, give good plus frames or mental frames, maybe a counter hit property, all the jazz. And a mix-up is when you force the opponent to guess. Some people suggest that I change the name to set play instead, but then I would have to explain the hell set play is to begin with. But the idea is, in the end of the day, you can't deal any real damage if the opponent can easily answer it without thinking. A good mix-up tool is the one that gives you the safest opportunity to perform the largest amount of ways to approach with, for which the defender must use a specific defense, and with those ways deal the biggest damage. This feels like a real fighting game design triangle. While doing keepout you often have to mix up your options, what the opponent might get in, and sometimes you need to use your keepout moves to pressure the opponent to make the mistake of going straight in. Doing pressure you need to periodically use mix-ups to actually deal damage, and sometimes you want to intentionally give away your turn to play footsies. Doing mix-up you want to stay away while you are setting up for the big mix-up, and once you are ready you go in and pressure, making the 50-50 even more dangerous. All three strategies always exist, they are essential to every fighting game, even the game like footsies. They are intertwined yet separate, they allow to categorize characters previously uncategorizable, all the categories just felt weird. Calling Onimaru a rushdown zoner just feels wrong, as it should, but saying he's a pressure keep out feels exactly like what Tony is. Brian from Tekken is not a rushdown character, but he's very much a pressure character, with a bit of keep out. Hisako from Killer Instinct isn't really a grappler, but she is a mix up character with a bit of both keep out and pressure, but mainly mix up. And that tells you a lot both as a Hisako player and as her opponent. Anyway, yeah, I think that makes sense. I don't think any fundamental strategy is left out or something. I don't expect everyone to just switch, but I'm definitely gonna. Like, keep out pressure and mix up are very intuitive concepts, and people don't really need to be explained what pressure is when you say Degray is a pressure character. And while Huarang and Dragunov are very different characters, they do fundamentally pursue the same basic strategy even though one's pressure is based on strings and the other's on plus frames. Both are very much valid, but with the old triangle Huarang would be the rushdown character, and Dragunov would be like a very weird rushdown, maybe even grabbed because he has a throw game. The Blasty Salami went with a pressure instead of rushdown to differentiate. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's uh, flying through the air with some bullshit from 10 miles away, it's, it's, a, it's a whole joke. So yeah, I think this new triangle is way less confusing and way more helpful to explain character in as few words as possible. Share your opinions in the comments or something. You you might you might notice that uh, I, I I might read every single comment on this video. Uh, yeah.